Oh, hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. And today, I'm very excited to check it out War Chest from AEG. This is for two or four players, take about 30 to 60 minutes to play. And oh no, it's for ages 14 plus. And in War Chest, this is an abstract strategy game that feels Similar to chess, except you're going to be trying to control different capture points all along the board. You're going to have four units you're going to be able to try and move around, and each of those four units is going to have their own very different, distinct special abilities. And the key is to try to use your different, distinct special abilities in order to outsmart and outwit your opponent. You can also play it as a four-player game where two teams of two will be pitting their brains and their really cool different characters against each other. It's got a lot going for it. But is it a good game? Let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of War Chest. So first and foremost, we have our handy dandy rule booklets. It is 16, 18 pages, double sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples. It's very well done, should have you up and running in no time at all. They use plenty of pictures and guides and all sorts of different things. So the way it's well laid out is very well done. Also, the last four or five pages are just how you're going to be able to play historical battles throughout time if you ever wanted to do that. And some frequently asked questions about specific roles. So huge thumbs up on the rule booklet. So in War Chest, this is an abstract strategy game in which you are going to try to get all of your control markers out, playing either two or four players. If you're playing with four players, then you'll be playing as teams, two teams uh, of two. So let's go over the components. Let's get into the gameplay. So first, we do have the board. You will notice it's not exactly flat, which is kind of annoying. I'll mention that more in the pros and cons. But once you start putting chips on there, it will become a moot point, and it doesn't impact gameplay. Now on the board, you'll notice there's some spots over to the side that are darker. Those are reserved exclusively for if you're playing four players. Whereas if you're playing two players, you're just going to play the lighter ones in the middle. Also, there's all these little uh, doodads in the middle, the green spots right here. These are the capture points. These are the points that you are going to try to fight for in order to get your tokens out. And these ones are cardboard, but the rest of them are really thick, sturdy poker chips. So you're going to start out like this. You're also going to flip this coin right here and see who has the initiative, either the wolf team or... Or the bird team. So I over here, I am the wolf team. I will get my really cool looking wolf bag. Super nice bag. Now, next thing you're going to do is you're going to pick out four of these cards right here. And I'll go over some of these cards later in the review at the very end to give you an idea of what are some of the different cards in the game. There's 16 grand total, so there's just enough to play a four-player game. But each player is going to get four of these cards. So I'll show you the four that I have. They're going to tell you what your unit can do. So first I got the Light Cavalry, who when they move, they're going to be able to move two spaces. This one is really good for getting around the board. Also, you notice in the top left corner, I have five of these. Some of the units will have four of them. Actually, all of my units have five of them. Next we have the Swordsman. After the Swordsman attacks, it may move. So my Swordsman really wants to get into the nitty-gritty, get involved, because he can escape pretty easily. Next we have the Mercenary. After you recruit a Mercenary, you may maneuver your Mercenary unit. I'll explain how this works a little bit later, but the Mercenary, really, really, really good early game card. Last, we have the Crossbowman. So attack a unit two spaces away in a straight line. The intervening space cannot have an occupied unit. So this person is going to be able to snipe you, kind of. So, how do we start the game? Well, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take two of those poker chips from each one of these different characters, and you're going to put them into your bag. You also have something called a royal coin, which will pop up sooner or later, and I'll show you how that works as well. So on your turn, uh, and you're going to take alternating turns, actually, uh, you're going to draw three of your tokens out of the bag. If you can't draw three, you draw as many as you can, and then you shuffle up what you have left, and you, of course, put them back in the bag. So it's kind of like a bag-building game. So I've got a mercenary, I've got a crossbowman, and I've got a light cavalry. And I can use these in whatever order I want. So let's go ahead and start showing you some of the different actions that you can take in the game, because I believe there's a grand total of nine actions, but once you start playing, you'll quickly know how they work. So the first action I'm going to do is I can deploy. So if I have an empty spot open, an empty spawn spot right here, I can deploy. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and deploy this guy, and I will deploy... Oh, actually, that would be the end of my turn, and then my opponent would get to do something, and then it would get back to me, and then I would deploy this guy right here. So that's the one of the actions you're going to be doing quite a lot is deploying and getting units onto the starting spots. 
Now, there's also a couple actions you can take when you discard something. So right now, I cannot put this out. I cannot do this. You can't combine units. That's just unnatural. Uh, you can't do that. So you are going to have to discard this to do a couple different things. First, you could pass, but nobody's ever done that. I've never seen anybody pass in this game. I suppose there could be scenarios where you might have to, uh, but you most likely won't. The next thing you can do is you can discard this to claim initiative, which means you would start going first. Now, since I am first, I cannot do that. Wah, 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 wah. Which means what I'm going to want to do is recruit something. So I'm going to discard this, I'll place it uh, right over here. We'll call this my discard pile. This is where I put my stuff, this is my discard pile. And then I get to bring out any one of these units. I get to take an extra one of these units and put it into my discard pile. So I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to recruit this, boom, guy right there. So I have now recruited a mercenary, and as per their special ability, they get to move one space. So boom, I am now one space closer to getting to one of these capture points. And that would be my last move of the turn. So let's go ahead, let's rinse, wash, repeat. I'm still going first because they didn't take the initiative token from me. I draw three tokens out of the bag. Bam, bam, bam. Uh, this is also a terrible example as well. Uh, but we'll, we'll get there. Probably the next turn. So, once again, it's my first turn, and we've gotten ourselves the Royal Coin. The Royal Coin is, for the most part, except for one particular unit, just going to allow you uh, to discard and do something. So, recruit something, or claim initiative, or something like that. So, yeah, I'll actually go ahead and... Ugh, this is not going to be a good turn. I'm just going to be bringing stuff out. Oh, no, I can recruit. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, boom, deploy that unit right there. And I will use this unit to bring out oop, that. So that means he gets to move one space. And then I have my crossbowman, unfortunately. I still don't have room for my crossbowman. So I'll use that, and I will get myself another crossbowman. So, turns back, gets back to me. Look in the bag. What do we got? One, two, three. All right, so now we're talking. So, the next action that you can take is that you can move. And normally you can only move one space. And how you move is you have to discard a token that matches a token you have out on the board. So, the reason why I didn't move this horse so far is because I haven't drawn my other green one. But now that I have, discard that, boom, boom, move him two spaces. That's great because that opens up a spot for me. Uh, likewise, if you want to attack someone... Or, if you want to use their special tactic on the bottom, like using their crossbow, then what you have to do is you have to discard a unit of the same type. So let's just pretend that some bad guy was foolish enough to come over here. Then I would use this. I would attack... Actually, this is a good time to show you an example. Let's say that this guy was right here. For some dumb reason. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, so I use this, and I'm going to attack with my swordman, which means I take off the top of this guy's stuff. And this goes into the box. This doesn't go into his discard. It is gone forever. So it's really bad to lose these. Now, you also notice that I don't take both. You're only gonna take one chip at a time, which means this guy is still alive. Now, how do you get the second chip out there? Well, that's a great thing. Uh, the other action you can do is bolster. So if you happen to have a chip of a unit that you have out, then boom, you can place it on top to make them a little bit more, not stronger, but more resilient. They're not going to die as easily. The last action you can do is that you can control something by discarding a unit uh, type that's at the board and on a control spot. So I could do this, and then I could boom, take over like that. Now, in the scenario where the bad guys actually were there first, so let's say that I had just went over here and the bad guy controls it, I can do the same thing. I can get this, discard it, say, hey, bye-bye, you're gone, and then I can take control of it. And then you're going to rinse, wash, and repeat until someone has gotten all of their clean spots out. So let's just refresh real quick, go over the different actions. First thing you can do, you can deploy, which means you can put stuff out on your empty spots like so. The next action you can do is you can bolster, which means you're just going to make them a little bit stronger so they're less likely to, um, to die. Next thing you can do, claim initiative, which means you take the first player token and flip it to the other side from the other person. You can recruit units by bringing them out from over here. You can pass, which is lame. Uh, you can also maneuver by discarding one of the same type and moving yourself around. Uh, move, attack, 
or control. And those all are going to require the same chip of the chip that you're going to be moving, attacking, or controlling. But once you get all of these out there, you're going to be the winner of the game. And that, in a nutshell, is how you're going to play War Chest. But I did say we are going to talk about the different cards in the game, because those really are the stars of the game. Let's go ahead and show you. Berserker. After the Berserker maneuvers, you may maneuver it again by discarding a bolstered coin from the Berserker unit. You may do this multiple times, but you may not remove the final coin. So what that pretty much means is you're going to be you're going to be bolstering up this Berserker. Like, oh, I'm going to put two on there, three on there, four on there, five on there. And then when you finally want to, you can be like, I'm going to move him one, two, three, four spaces. But you have to take off all the tops. Really cool card as long as you plan it correctly. Next, we have the Royal Guard, uh, which is just like a regular one. But you can discard the Royal Guard to move the Royal... Uh, uh, discard the royal coin to move the royal guard. So I talked about this this coin right here. This will allow you to move this guy. And when the royal guard is attacked, you may remove a royal guard coin from the supply rather for, than from its unit. So that's really big. The supply are these chips right over here. So you can lose your life over here instead of your life on the board, which means they can kind of stay out there. They're very sticky. Next, we have the Ensign. Choose a friendly unit within two spaces of the Ensign. The chosen unit performs a normal move to a space within two spaces of the Ensign. So essentially, they're going to be bossing people around, telling them where to move. It gives you a little bit more flexibility. Next, we have Footman. Perform one maneuver with each Footman unit on the board. And also, you can two Footman units may be deployed at a time. I haven't really figured out the gist of how to use this one well yet. Next we have the Knight. The Knight can only be attacked by units that are bolstered, so they have like armor, which means uh, if you try to attack him and you don't have a stack of two, three, four, or five, you're not going to do anything to him. Next we have the Scout. Really interesting one. The Scout may be deployed adjacent to any friendly unit, so you can kind of ignore these uh, symbols and you can just get them out whenever you want. Very powerful. Allows you to get a lot out early on. Next, we have the Pikeman. When the Pikeman is attacked by an adjacent unit, remove a coin from that unit. The Lancer, move one or two spaces and then attack all in a straight line. Very cool one, but you only get four of them. The Lancer can only attack by using its tactics, so they can't just attack normally one space away. Marshal, which is a little bit like the Lance and Sign, except they're going to be ordering people to attack instead of move. So if you can get near people, Marshal can yell at them attack. And Warrior Priest, after the Warrior Priest attacks, attacks or controls, draw one coin from your bag and immediately use it to take any action. This is probably my favorite one in the entire game. This one, if you get it in the right position, you can kind of string together lots of actions, which is great. Archer, attack a unit two spaces away. The intervening space may be occupied by a unit. The archer can only attack by using its tactic. And the cavalry, move and then attack. Very powerful. So those are the 16 different cards you're going to get inside of War Chest. Alrighty then, War Chest from AEG. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. First and foremost, incredibly restricted player count at two or four players. And while I did like it at four players, I liked it best at two. It was just a very quick, snappy game. It's just take an action, 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 draw from your bags, take an action, take an action, take an action. It goes by very, very fast. It says 30, 60 minutes. You can probably bust one of the games out in like 20 to 25 minutes if you're playing a two-player game whereas with four players it does pose some problems uh first and foremost it's a lot more difficult to plan because there's going to be more units on the board which you may like or dislike that's a your personal uh that's a your mileage may vary kind of thing uh but the time between turns is going to take a little bit longer also it can run into the alpha gamer problem. I actually saw this happen when I was playing it in my classroom with two kids, and one of the kids was better at the game than the other one. They're like, you should probably do this. Oh, and you should probably do this on the next turn. And it just got to the point where that person was pretty much controlling both turns, and I definitely could see that being an issue in this game. So you need to make sure you step up and say, hey, no, 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 you, you let, let me take my turn, all right? Thanks, Chief. I appreciate the help. Uh, also, if you don't like team games, the four-player version is not going to be for you. You can't just play it as a free-for-all. There's no modes for that. Uh, another comment I have of this game, component-wise, is there's no good way... Oh, gosh, yeah, all the stuff came out. All the stuff came out. Uh, but that would not happen if I put the board on top, I do believe. But there's no good way to get this insert out of the box. There's, like, this plastic insert that really holds everything very well. But when you pick it up like that, things are just going to fall out. So you either have to leave it in the box or not take it out of the box, which are the exact same thing, but I just set up in different ways. And I'm hoping you didn't notice, but then I probably shouldn't have brought it up. Because now that I brought it up, it's really highlighting the fact that I said the same thing two times in a row and I've kind of lost my train of thought now because that's kind of what I do uh it's annoying it's not a deal breaker though by any stretch of the imagination um also magnetic class box you're gonna like it 
probably going to hate it. Uh, this is one of the games that you're probably going to put on its uh, bottom instead of on its side because, as you saw, stuff falls out. Oh, another comment of this game is that while I absolutely love the special abilities and the different cards, I'm going to tell you more about that in the pros, there's only 16, which means if you do play this at four players, there's never going to be any variety. There's never going to be like, oh, this card isn't in or this card is in, and I really felt like that's a bit of a bummer. I do understand that it's costly to put out this game because of these really nice stinking poker chips. They didn't want to take any more of a risk than they're already taking because putting out an abstract strategy game is never a slam dunk in our hobby. So I understand it, but still, it's a little bit of a bummer. It's repetitive. Uh, it's a really, relatively light game, which might be a turn off some people. It's an abstract strategy, so there's no real theme. Um, I mean, the characters do stuff, and sometimes the characters, the, I will say this, the characters do stuff that makes sense to their character, which is nice, they tried, but moving on to the pros, this is a great game, this is a great game, and I think this might be my favorite two-player abstract strategy game of all time. Now, that being said, abstract strategy is my least favorite genre of all time, but this is a great game, this is a absolutely great game that I can recommend to just about anybody, if you routinely hit two players or four players. Game night game absolutely had a lot of fun with this playing with somebody else we went back and forth now i have not got a chance to play it four players with adults so i do want to mention that but i don't think it would impact my my enjoyment at all because i really we played about three games of this just back to back to back when we were playing two players because it was just the kind of thing where the other guy was like oh i want to see more of these cards i want to see more of these cards and he would get the same cards be like no 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 deal me another card i want to try some of the new special the new abilities and stuff like that and that's awesome the character powers are really stinking cool the components are very very nice uh which which is good you know really I, which is great i wish there was more though as i mentioned the cons but yes i do like the character powers each one is different and diverse and they feel pretty well balanced like it's not like oh i got this guy he kind of sucks it's just like i have to figure out the way to unleash this guy's potential and for nearly everybody i think except for the footman i have figured out how to do it because i've probably played this about 10 or 12 times now it went over really well in my classroom uh, so as a family game, absolutely, I taught this to an eight-year-old, and she really enjoyed it. She was not good at it, and I crushed her, and I had to kind of, you know, put on kid gloves to play with her. But it was the kind of thing where it was deeper strategy than she's used to, and she really enjoyed that. Uh, I, I, I like that. I like the fact, I wish there was a player aid card that would show you all nine of the different actions you can do. That's a little bit of a nitpick. But... I really enjoy the gameplay. It's fast. It's snappy. You know, the box looks good. It's got aesthetic appeal. The tokens, the chips are fun to play with in between turns. And I really hope this game does great because I think it is a great game. It's going into my collection. I will be bringing it into my classroom from time to time to play with some of the, uh, the kids that can handle it. But I think if you have a kid that can handle it or you routinely play two-player games and you like abstract... Oh my gosh, if you like abstract strategy games, absolutely insta-buy. If you don't like abstract strategy games, I still think this is definitely one you're going to want to try because it is a great game. That is... That is War Chest. That's annoying. From AEG. Absolutely one I can recommend. Great game. And that's coming from someone who doesn't really like abstract strategy games that much. Uh, I am chomping at the bit. I can't wait to see if they come out with some expansions for this. Just, just give me more units. Just give me more units. Just sell me like three bucks. Like a little four or five, you know, a one pack with four chips in there. I don't know how you would do it. I would totally buy those. Three, five bucks, something like that. I don't know. I will buy it i just want more cards for this i want more units for this because i really am digging this game this is one that i think is going to stay on my shelf for quite a long time as war chest from aeg great abstract strategy game if you enjoyed this review please sure click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below let me know have you ever had a ottoman for me personally yes they're great i th wait an ottoman's like one of those really big chair couch things right Oh man, I really should know what an ottoman is before I ask this question. I'm assuming I've had an ottoman. I had it at my ex-girlfriend's house, and I almost stole it from her when we broke up. But I was—it was just too heavy to carry. It was—it was like steel. She never used it, and she didn't really like it that much. And I was the main reason why I was still in the house because we were together. And I was like, "No, babe, I love that thing. I sit on there, and, you know, use my computer all the time." She's like, "Fine, we'll keep it." So she wouldn't have missed it that much, but it still would have been stealing. You know, it's like a really big gray area. But then at the same time, I'm not actually sure if that is an ottoman. So, yeah, this question kind of stinks. Let me know in the comments below if you had an ottoman before. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. Or if you know what an ottoman is. I mean, even that. I mean, you're you're one step ahead of the game if you know what an ottoman is.